Okay, so... Let me do something real quick. Okay. See if it helps a little bit with some lights. Yeah, that's a little better. Okay, let's see. Here we go. Boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us back for part two, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than the legendary student minister, Nuri Muhammad himself. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, Josh. It's an honor to be back on the airwaves and share space and time with you, mighty warrior. All oh, praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, the first question we have for you, uh, our minister, is, is Ramadan. Uh, how is your Ramadan going? By Allah's grace, it's, it's going well. Um, you know, the, the, I, I just was, you know, I like to plan with words all the time. And, and, I, and I took Ramadan and broke it down into an acronym mm. to help keep the theme of it alive in my mind and shared it with others. And it seems to have gotten a little footing, but Ramadan, uh, remembering Allah, morning, afternoon, day and night. So by Allah's grace, uh, you know, we've been having a good Ramadan so far, 21 days in, no more makeup days, uh, even might have me a few rollover minutes with my Quran. <laughs> <laughs> Praise yes, be to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, what advice would you give, uh, Brother Minister, to people uh, about Ramadan? Like, who, like who, who are, you know, the believers who are fasting? What advice would you give to us? Well, this is this is a time period. You know, Ramadan is is affectionately uh, known for its fasting discipline, abstaining from food and water during the daylight hours. Uh, you know, sexual uh, intimacy with your mate, as well as uh, guarding the gates of the eye and the ear for anything that will go in that will be foul, low down violent and pure. So that's what it's known for, but it, it really uh, is affectionately called by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the month of the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is a time period that we don't want to be so focused on what we put in our mouth or don't put in our mouth during the daylight hours, uh, but we wanna be focused on what we do put in our mind during the daylight and at nighttime. And the primary spiritual food that we the believers should be digesting in a time like this is the Holy Quran. So that part, you know, 30 parts, one part per day, um, average you about 25 to 35 minutes of, of reading a book that opens up telling you about what is not, doesn't, what's not in it, it tells you in this book, there is no doubt. That's right. So, you know, by, by law, according to the minister, he said for every physical law there is in the universe, there is in nature a spiritual counterpart. So if you are what you eat physically, then the spiritual counterpart means you are what you eat spiritually. Mm -hmm. So to keep food and water out of your mouth, and feed your mind 25 to 35 minutes a day on a book that has no doubt in it. If you are what you eat, then no doubt will be in you. And since doubt is the mother of hypocrisy, you can't have hypocrisy ever grow in you if you don't have the parent, which is doubt. So this is that great season, you know, and I, I also would suggest to those that maybe you're not in the ranks of the nation, maybe you're not someone that calls themselves a Muslim. Well, you've got 1,700,000 soldiers participating in the same spiritual and physical exercise at the same time, you should join them. Because in Ramadan, look at this, in Ramadan, Prophet Muhammad said that the gates of heaven are open and the gates of hell are closed. Mm -hmm. All the demons are bound and all the angels are let loose in your life. You know, not, not nothing spooky going on. It don't mean that there's some little, you know, anorexic pantyhose wearing little red dudes with no pitchfork in a cage underground or some 
you know, little white girls in some cheap Victoria's Secret outfits with some chicken wings on their back, flying around, making everything okay. <laughs> but simple, suffice it to say, if heaven is open, angels are sent forth, hell is closed, devils, demons are bound, then it means that it's easier to do right and, and easier to resist wrong during Ramadan. So mm-hmm. this, is that, this is that habit breaking season. So I would suggest that anyone that wants to break any bad habit, join on with the 1 billion, 700 million soldiers around the world called, they call themselves Muslims, practice this month of Ramadan. And you'll be surprised how easy it will be for you never to pick up the cigarette or the lean or the weed or, or whatever bad habits you have, you can break it. And uh, hopefully with the, with the last 10 days that we can come out of this thing like they did in the Black Panther, they said Wakanda, yes, sir. we should be able to say Ramadan forever. For all praises to Allah, our minister, and people are showing you love all across the country. Thank you, everyone. And once you put this on YouTube, please let us know what city you're from. Both of my sisters, Miriam and Naima, send the greetings, sister Sonia sends the greetings, brother Michael says Ramadan Mubarak, and people are just showing you love. Praise be to Allah. Allah. Yes, sir. My next question for you, sir, is uh, before we got on the air, I just wanted to make sure I sent it again about our family sending positive energy to you uh, and your family during this time. What advice would you give to people on moving forward during why they're grieving? Well, gratitude. I've learned that gratitude is the anesthetic for grief. Uh, You know, when you're going to the doctor or hospital for surgery, the anesthesiologist uh, measures your body, your weight and the magnitude of the surgery. And they prescribe an anesthetic to to relieve pain or have or put you under while the operation takes place so that it will have no pain to it at all. Uh, and, and in this, you know, this is the greatest uh, loss that I could have ever imagined happening to me in my life. Uh, this is a pain that I feel at the very core of my being and even on a cellular level. And I, and I know, you know, I'm operating today on the, this wonderful podcast with a broken heart, but uh, gratitude, gratitude is the anesthetic for grief. Uh, and the more we are grateful to Allah, the Supreme Being, for whoever and whatever uh, we have been given and however long we had it, know that it is out of the beneficence of Allah that we've been gifted our own gift called life. And none of us did anything to earn or deserve it. It was just a gift that he gave out of his beneficence, meaning, you know, mercy means whenever something bad happens, he doesn't give you the whole consequence for your wrong. But beneficence means when you haven't even done anything to deserve it, and he gives you something good anyway. So my life is that, your life is that, my daughter's life uh, was that. And I, I thank Allah for those 22 years and uh, the gratitude to Allah for the gift of her life and the life of my other children and my family and my own life, the, the gift of my, my believing family. You know, blood is thicker than water, but spirit is thicker than blood. Mm, mm, mm. You, can, you got blood relatives, but then you got spirit relatives and they are not any less your brother or sister because they don't share blood when they share the same belief. In fact, they, they, they according to what we've been reading in the Holy Quran, they may even be more your brother and sister uh, than, than the blood is. So, you know, I'm, I, I would suggest to anyone that's going through a trial, you, you know, number one, you have to know that, that everything happens by the will of Allah. It's either his active or his permissive will, but nothing that has ever happened, uh, it happens outside the will of Allah. So at the, end, at the end of the cycle, once you understand that, question yourself and ask yourself the why and then ask the God the why. And if he can give you that why, then you'll be able to come out of it uh, in the words uh, of the gospel song, better, stronger, 
Yes, sir. And wiser. Yes, sir. To come out of it that way. So, you know, handle it like that and Allah will bless us. It doesn't feel like that when you're under the weight, but at a certain point, uh, you'll get through it and you'll become better, stronger, and wiser. And I'm patiently anxious, Brother Josh, to get to that spot. But I haven't gotten out from underneath it uh, in that sense. But that's my suggestion to those that are undergoing trial, which is everybody on this uh, view in the viewing audience. You're going through something. So process it properly. Thank Allah for everything and do your gratitude list and watch you come up out of grief. Beautiful. All praises to Allah. Excellent teacher, our minister, and people are showing you love. And once again, we send a positive energy to you and your family, sir. My, my, next, my next question for you is um, the Swan Song, Most High Miss Louis Farrakhan's uh, amazing speech, uh, this Savior's Day. Uh, we're going to come to that later, but I want to sp speak with you on raising charity. What you just have such a gift and a skill to do it. You know, people hitting you with, I'm an actor, so I know how I can. Sometimes some can throw you off impromptu letters and no, I mean, you just, I mean, you got to do it all. What gives you that gift and skill to be able to do it on the, like, I mean, just all the pressure, everybody looking at you and you dealing with Muhammad's money and what, what is, how did you get that skill set? Accidentally on purpose, bro, Josh. <laughs> I never, I never wanted to do that. Mm, mm. So it was really the minister mm. one day at Savior's Day. And uh, it was probably seven years ago, five, seven years ago. And I was sitting on stage, you know, ready to hear from the minister. And the uh, brother Ishmael came up to me and said, the minister wants you to do the charity. I said, what? <laughs> he said, yes, sir. I said, today? He said, yes, sir. Mm, mm. You know, seven minutes later, uh, I was up doing it, but you know, the minister said this about it. He said that, uh, you know, we broke a record this past uh, Savior's Day with the largest amount of charity ever raised uh, for Savior's Day or for any event that we've thrown in the nation. Yes, sir. And that uh, happened inside of, uh, inside the mosque where you had 1,400 people in the sanctuary and probably another two or 3,000 on the grounds in comparison to sometime we've got 25 to 50,000 people at a Savior's Day event. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't take any credit for it. I felt like um, that a lot of people wanted to, to show the minister some level of love and appreciation since this is his last message. Let me go ahead and, and, and show him. So let my name be heard. And I want you to know I love you and I love the nation and what you all are doing. So I don't take any credit for that, but the minister did say this. He said, uh, we were with, I was with him one day and there was a, a congresswoman present, a sister congresswoman who had watched uh, Savior's Day mm -hmm. and seen me and she said, uh, she told the minister that I'll, oh, this, I don't know, it's something special about this brother right here because I don't give money, but I, I, I was not even there. I was watching it on the webcast and I found a way to donate more than I've ever donated before to anything. And I don't know what it is, but it's something special about him. And the minister said, he said, well, it is the purity of his heart. Mm -hmm. And it is the, he, when you see him and when you hear him, he represents the best part of the people. And the people, when they see him, they feel the love and they feel like they're looking at and hearing the best of themselves. So being the way he is, he connects with the best in the people. Loving the way he loves, he connects with their love and it becomes what you see. So that's his assessment. Yes, you sir, know, yes, sir. I never wanted to do it, but all praise is due to Allah, uh, you know, accidentally on purpose i got put up there and i haven't been off since been on there ever since but i'm thankful to Allah because two of the greatest contributions in fact i will put them at the top of the list the two greatest contributions that we could ever give to the messenger of god 
is human resources and financial resources. Mm, mm, mm. Good people with great skill sets, good people that are loyal, good people that are sacrificial, good people that have a mind willingness to learn and wealth by which those good people can hear the command of that good teacher and have the resources to do the good work. Oh, praises you so a lot. Excellent. Yes, sir. And remember, some people showing you love. I can't even read all of the comments, but thank you all. We can't wait to put this on YouTube as well. Uh, speaking of the resources and, and Zakat and charity, um, a lot of artists, a lot of rappers, a lot of people that um, some judgmental people may judge like the gangster rappers or like, you know, certain facets of our community, but yet they show love to the minister and to the nation. How, what advice would you give to us about being having that same attracting power to people who we may look down on um, so that we can be like the minister and attract, you know, all facets of life. Well, you know, that the fact we, we are, we are saviors, we are redeemers uh, and, and the work of redemption, the work of saving, you have to, you have to meet people where they are. So, so we say as FOI, in the nation, this is the name given to the military training of the men who belong to Islam in North America. These are the, the, men, the male members of the nation. We say that our sole purpose That's right. is to deliver at the time of that writing, the 17 million or more dead to the Lamb of God. Today, 47 million or more dead to the Lamb of God, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Well, well, there's a difference between delivering something and sending something. Mm, mm. See, if I send you something, I remain where I am and you go. Yes, sir. But if I'm delivering you, I have to go where you are. I have to be in contact with you wherever I found you. And then I have to bring you on a journey with me and me and you both show up at the same location. That's called delivering. Yes, sir. So, so in that sense, you know, and what better things should uh, artists do that might have made music that degraded women, that might have made music that, you know, killed 15 of his brothers on just two tracks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know, he didn't, he didn't sow a hundred kilos of cocaine. He, he didn't, he didn't drunk seven bottles of lean. <laughs> <laughs> eight what what better act would a man or a woman that has done something that would be considered wrong or sin what better act would, could they do than to give in charity mm. look, look at what it says but josh and the viewing audience in the holy quran it says that charity will do away with some of your evil deeds yes sir yes sir and in the bible it says that charity covers a multitude of sins. Yes, sir. Not that, not that you can pay off God with money, but the Lord of the world knows this attachment we have to money as a medium of exchange. Money is what allows man and woman to operate in the world and say be, and it is materializes. Yes, sir. The yes, less sir. money you have, the longer the and it takes. The more money you have, the faster the and it produces your ears. So if a person that is whoever they are, artist, hustler, whatever they've done in the world that that is a wrong or an evil, it would be a good thing for them, you know, not to pay off God, but the Quran says that there will be a day where there will be no bartering mm. and no bargain will be accepted. Yes, sir. So right now, charity covers, covers a multitude of sin. And right now, right now, when you give in charity, you can do away with some of uh, your evil deeds. So it's a good thing for them brothers and sisters to do it. And reality is, is that there's nobody, listen to what I'm saying, there's yes, nobody Black in America, for sure, and possibly the world that has ever achieved a category 
that you would look up to them and call them a manifestation of black excellence unless they were touched by the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad in general and the minister in specific at some phase in their development. Mm. I've never met a singer, a rapper, a, a actor, a mogul, a billionaire, an investor, an influencer. I've never met, met an athlete that is at the top of the craft manifesting what we call black excellence that does not love the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and has not benefited from the wisdom of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Hey, you, hey, you, you got to believe the black man is God in order to operate on a certain level. Yes, sir. There's no spiritual movement on the planet that can teach it, defend it, and verify that the black man is God like the nation of Islam. Praise be to Allah. Oh, praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And some people showing you love from all over the country. Thank you, Sister Sadar. Uh, that is Sadar's first time watching. Sister Captain Brenda, Sister uh, Sherry Pearl. Just some people showing you love from all over the country. Uh, Roman, so we have a few more questions for you, but we have a quick 60 second commercial break for yes, all sir. of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. And I want to thank everyone who continues to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, all of the anonymous donations. People who are all over the country, um, our YouTube family, our Facebook family, uh, I want to thank everyone who continues to show love to the People's Podcast during the holy month of Ramadan. It's truly, uh, we're truly grateful. If you would like to be a sponsor or donor, please cash at the People's Podcast. My brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production, he has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me, children's book and coloring book. She just released one in Spanish. On all, you can get all three on Amazon, ABC I Love Me. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country. And right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia, we love our tiny dancers. Rock Communications, if you're working on a book, they do copy editing, project management, content development, and media relations. Rock Communications. Uh, Fashion Gods, Urban Wear for men and boys, 314-329-6009. They keep you best dressed in the best of fashion, dripping in, in high-end clothes. Um, student Minister Robert Muhammad of Austin, Texas, conflict mediation, squashing the beef throughout the Southwest region. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, children of the Most High, giving birth to a God in the science of child rearing. We're coming right back to our brothers, Student Minister Nuri. Sister Sherry Muhammad, AsiaticMinds.com. She teaches STEM virtually the young kings and queens all across the country. AsiaticMinds.com. Brother Kenneth, bow tie maker extraordinaire. Um, he'll ship bow ties to you anywhere in the nation. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry's Turkey Legs right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services out of Chicago. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, AbdulSharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. Right back to our brother, uh, Student Minister Nuri, and all of the people who are watching. Um, we have so many questions for you, and I'm, I'm going all over because I have an order. But speaking of books, we want to come specifically to your relationships books in, in, a, few, in a few moments. But I wanted to ask you, sir, would you ever write a book on your personal life and journey? Uh, I, I can't say never, but I we've had some some people that have shopped us to do it. And uh, I just, by, by Allah's grace, we were just in uh, New York on some other uh, business. And a brother came to the hotel, uh, brought to us by one of the, to our captain out there. Mm -hmm. And he had showed up to the captain because they they had come and many years ago, they videoed me while I was in New York and we had done, um, it was like 15 engagements in four days mm -hmm. all over uh, the city. And they went with us everywhere and they decided they wanted to come to the city to, to, to video uh, us at the mosque, me at the mosque, my family. And they went to my hood that I came up in mm. and interviewed people that grew up with, with me and or was still with me to this day. And uh, I never seen any of the footage. And lo and behold, the brothers that had commissioned them to do it uh, did not, uh, I guess, didn't pay them to, to get it. So they the, the camera crew owned it. And they decided to put it together 
uh, as a documentary and they entered it a few months ago in a film festival in Germany mm. and they, they got an award for it. Mm. But it's on my life uh, to some extent. So I got to see a little bit of it. And when I seen it, I was like, oh man, it's, you know, this is all right, but it's a lot of missing ingredients. But I, I, I think that, that, you know, as the minister said this once, he said that uh, from the honor of Elijah Muhammad, that you never know a testator's testament until Allah puts a period on his life. That's right, that's right. So, you know, there, there are some uh, stories and, and so many comparisons to the way that I came up and came out of you know streets the street life yes sir that would would be good for for you know the up and coming young soldiers that they wouldn't have to bump their head so i am throwing it all the way out i haven't thrown it all the way out but but i'm i'm thinking of doing something like that it may be uh, a documentary type thing or it may be an audio book where you can listen just listen to it and uh so Needless to say, it's, 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 it's in the back of the closet on the other side of the drawing board. Mm, mm. But not all the way on the drawing board yet. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Thank you. And some people continue to show love in the comments. Thank you all as well. My next question for you is, is speaking of people being around you, uh, filming you, I, I asked my father and many uh, ministers this and preachers as well. When you have people who are in your personal space and, and you're in a spiritual way, how do you know like who to trust and who not to trust? Like, how do you move when you're on a day-to-day, you're traveling all around? Like, how do you know, how do you discern that? Well, you know, well, one, one thing, of course, you know, that, 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 that the spirit of discernment is, is a general gift that you have to be given. Uh, but as we are taught, we are taught from, through Islam, from the Holy Quran, think good of your brother first. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you you give everybody the benefit of the doubt and you you assume that they are good, true, and sincere uh, until they show otherwise. So I don't do a whole lot of scrutinizing on, on who's going to be there. Yes, sir. But, but if, you know, you start manifesting uh, certain weaknesses or, or you start operating uh, in, in a way that you're not that dependable, then, you know, you know, we have to renegotiate our contract. <laughs> so, I always do that. But so it's, you know, we, we, we believe what we believe and we try to keep soldiers around that, that have that affinity. You don't want people around you that just love uh, the cause. You want people around you that love the cause and uh, love your unique contribution to that cause. Mm, mm. And you don't want people around you that just love you as a person and don't love the cause that you've given your life to. Yes, sir. So you want to have it. It's kind of like uh, when choosing a mate, the Holy Quran says in Surah 2432, and marry those among you and those who are fit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want to you wanna find a mate that is your faith and also is your flavor? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, you know, it's people, it's people that's out in the world that might be your flavor, but they're not your faith. Yes, sir. <laughs> and you got some people that's in the ranks with you that might have your faith, but are they your flavor? That's right. That's right. You want them to have both because you want them to have both. And the same goes, you know, when it comes to those that that you want with you, you want people with you uh, that have a, a love for the cause and also a love for your unique contribution to that cause. You don't want people to just have a love for you as a person. Yes, sir. But don't love what you have given your life to and what you're trying to represent and build for. So that, you know, I don't, I don't get into, you know, heavy scrutinizing like that, you know, come, come who may and uh, until you show otherwise, you all good. But once you show other, otherwise, Maybe we won't be disconnected, but there will be some distance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Beautiful. All praises to a lot. And people are giving you so many uh, good points and questions in the comments. 
my next question for you, sir, is speaking on mates, um, the, the pandemic caused a lot of panic in single people. You know what I'm saying? And Mary, I'm sure married people as well, but the single people for sure, people were like, it's the end of the world. Nobody want to be alone. And people just started panicking, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because nobody, everybody, you know, it just caused hysteria. What advice would you give to the single people who are panicking right now? Well, in that same chapter I just quoted, it tells you, and if you can't find that mate, keep chased. Mm. Look, mm. until a lot of God blesses you out of his grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With a spouse. So when you unpack that, brother Josh, that means that Allah is a matchmaker. That's right. So we we spend we invest too much time trying to find a mate and not enough time in becoming the mate for the woman or the man that we're looking for. Mm. So, so if you invest your time in becoming a Abraham, God will send you a Sarah. Yes, sir. If you invest your energy on self-examination, self-analysis, self-correction that leads to self-improvement, if you strive to be a Khadija, you'll attract a Farrakhan. You don't, you, you don't have to go out looking for a Farrakhan. Be the Khadijah and Farrakhan will show up by Allah's hands. You don't have to be a, a, a Sarah or chase a Sarah. Be Abraham. Yes, sir. You're magnetized by divine magnetism. You're, you're magnetized to Sarah to you if you become Brother Abraham. So that, that's, that's the recommendation. Remember that your mind is a magnet. Yes, sir. And by the law of centrifugal force, your thoughts traveling around your brain cells, 14 billion of them, so teaches the most honorable Elijah Muhammad on the average of 24 billion miles per second. Yes, sir. By the law of centripetal force, you began to draw unto yourself people, situations, and circumstance that match the nature of your thoughts. Yes, sir. So when you become what you're supposed to become and you think like Farrakhan, then your mind will bring to you the Khadija. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful. Yes, sir. We have two more questions for you, Brother Minister. Yes, um, speaking of the most unmissable is Farrakhan, a lot of the comments that I see on YouTube, uh, mm -hmm. whenever you speak or get an interview, this notion that because the minister is still physically alive, that he has to be working for the government. You got to be an Illuminati or, you know what I'm saying? People like, how, how is the nation of Islam still functioning when so many other people are falling off? What do you tell people who, who say that? Well, it should be the complete opposite in your thinking. Mm, mm. You shouldn't say that we sold our soul to the devil. You should say that we've submitted our will to the will of Allah. So it, it is the... It is not the result of Satan backing the nation. It's a result of God backing the nation. Beautiful. Go study the counterintelligence program of J. Edgar Hoover and read the specific angle on black nationalism. Yes, sir. And when you do in the research, and you don't have to dig deep, just Google it. Read the COINTEL Pro for Black Nationalism, and I want you to watch how much more work they they put in to create animosity and division within the ranks of the nation, mm. envy and jealousy among the leadership. Yes, sir. And look, and look at how many agents and provocateurs were in the nation. Then you look at what they did with SNCC, with Move, with Core. Yes, with sir. the Black Panther Party, you looked at when they destabilized them and they said after destabilizing them that the agents will be reassigned. Mm. Well, hell, if nothing was left but the nation, where do you think they got reassigned to? Mm, mm, mm. So we have had the most snitches, the most stool pigeons, the most agents, provocateurs, and the largest manufacturing of hypocrites in the ranks of any movement that has ever existed in the world. Mm. Yet they're gone, but we still here. 
that ought to let you know that this is God's nation. Yes, sir. And didn't you read when you were coming up in church that no weapon formed Come on. against the righteous would prosper? Yes, sir. It didn't say they wouldn't form. They formed, but they wouldn't prosper. So why not attribute the righteousness of the nation? Why not attribute the closeness to Allah of the minister? Why not say that man, God must really be with this man? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For him to go against the most formidable enemy that any messenger or prophet has ever had as an opponent and still looking good, sounding good with a nation that still exists, doing well and thriving by the grace of Allah. It ain't the devil. It's God. Oh, praise it's God's God. nation. Yes, sir. Beautiful teaching, bro, minister. Amen. Speaking of that, 10, 10, 15, just as that else, it's, it's a thick climate. And once again, you're on stage representing by the grace of Allah. There's no, when you see the most time it's fine, you hear him say just as else. People are against, you know, we, we here we are on the nation's steps and you're representing the teachings of most time Elijah Muhammad as taught by the Honorable Miss Louis Farrakhan. You're not nervous. You don't, you, you okay. You good. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm always nervous. Mm. I'm nervous when I do Juma prayer. Mm, mm. I'm nervous if I'm sitting hosting study group. I'm nervous whenever I speak sitting on the floor to a kindergarten class. Yes, I'm always nervous. And, and I believe that the minute that you are not nervous anymore is the time you're supposed to either reassess and recommit or get out of that work altogether. Mm, because mm. nervousness, the positive nervousness should come from your respect for what you do and who you're talking to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm always nervous. So if you could count the amount of prayers that I would do before I taught a lecture, I'm five daily prayers. I might get five minute prayers. Yes, sir. Five yes, sir. Minutes, I might have five of them. Yes, sir. So it is that it is, you know, I'm always in that, that mode, but it's not, uh, it's not that paralyzing kind of nervousness. It could be, but I always ask Allah, you know, my prayer is that, oh, Allah, that even though I am imperfect, please allow your word to have a perfect effect on the minds and the hearts of all of those who come in contact with your message, message directly today and indirectly in, in the future. And I ask this, not for my own personal sake, or my own grandizement, but so that you, your Christ, and your minister may be properly known in the hearts of men. Mm. So I don't even, I'm not even representing in, in, on no platform thinking about what somebody thinks about me. I'm there for the sole purpose of hopefully putting in their mind something that makes them want to not take me as a teacher, but pull up their desk right next to mine in the same classroom and we both be students of that teacher. Praise Beautiful, Lord. excellent. Last, these are the last two questions, Brother Minister. Is yes. there any comedies that you're watching? Anything to keep your spirit up? You know, outside of the, the word, just to relax when you're in your downtime. Oh, the the great the my, my in my humble opinion, one of the greatest therapies that you could ever engage in is some back to back Martin. <laughs> That's one of the greatest therapies on the planet. That's right. Yes, sir. Don't let you find a way to get some back-to-back -back Martins with no commercials. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> so I, I like I like Martin. I like the Cosby show. Yes, sir. I like Blackish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's going off the air, but I, I liked Blackish. Yes, you sir. Know, none of these programs are perfect, but they all uh were good. So that's that's what I, I like, you know, I like those are my 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 go to comedic therapies. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful. And Bramis, a quick suggestion for you. There's a new show uh, called Abbott Elementary. Yes, it's, I like that one, too. OK, yeah, I was going to let you put you on. Yes, sir. Right, I like that one, too. It's, OK, it's, it's pretty good as well. Yes, sir. OK, people showing love in the comments and Sister Malika's the Sonia. 
um, just people from Brother Samuel X. Clark, people from all over the country, Sadar, I want to thank everyone again for our last question. Yes, sir. The swan song. The, um, I mean, it was an intense, and it was just, it was a beautiful experience, but to know that the Muslim Missiles Fire can say this maybe is public, that last public address. What advice would you give to the generations after who didn't come up with y'all had added up, stop the killing, y'all had in minister for so long. So, you know what I'm saying? Y'all had it, but for us, it was like, man, we could just, and he's saying, what advice would you give to keep going, for us to keep going? Well, you know, there was something that the minister said, uh, and it was kind of angled on the same kind of question during the Swan Song message. Yes, sir. He said, uh, uh, what we gonna do without Farrakhan is, is we is, is there gonna be another another Farrakhan? He said, you don't need another one. That's right. The one is sufficient. Mm. So the, the word is still present even when the teacher is absent. And if we just peel back the layers uh, and view our relationship with the minister, 99% of us, our relationship is not a personal one-on-one -on -one sitting down privately with him. Yes, sir. We are connected to the minister. 99.9% .9 because we are connected to what he's teaching. Yes, sir. So if that's true, then you still have access to the lectures, the writings in the absence of the teacher. Yes, sir. So if your connection, why he was present, 99.9% .9 of that was through his teaching and his teaching is still here, then why would you want to lose your connection? Mm. Stay connected to the teaching. So we came in. I think I came in the ranks right after uh, added up. Mm. But I went back and re-listened to it. I came in the ranks after Who is God? Yes, sir. And I went back and studied it and probably have listened to that lecture over 100 times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I came in the ranks after uh, the Stop the Killing tours. And by the time Shirley Manners and Lost tours throughout the colleges, but I went back and listened to all of it. Hell, I was four whenever the nation was being rebuilt. Mm. But I went back and listened to all the lectures that I could from the rebuilding. So you don't have to have lived during the time of the physical movement. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, with the spiritual movement still present. So go back and teach it. The reason he said you don't need another fire con is because this one fire con has taught so much. Yes, sir. All yes, sir. Subjects, all we need to do is plug in, tap into what he's already taught and practice the principles in present time. And not only will he be among us, but he will be in us. Beautiful. All oh, praise due to Allah. Well, I want to thank you on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, Brother Minister, for taking time out of your busy schedule. We're sending so much love and positive energy to you and your family. May Allah continue to bless you all. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, brother Josh. Thank you, brother minister. Yes, sir. Well.